I know a couple of broads that could come on. <laughs> we can we can get further into that. But we won't. <laughs> broads are really creative too, aren't they? Sometimes. Hi, right, welcome to uh, Dirty Little Creatives, <laughs> episode three, coming out guns blazing. Do you want to take over the rest of the intro? Because I've been hogging it a little bit. Um, yeah, we can do. Um, so this is Nick Deakin, who is totally okay. He's an Instagram handle, uh, graphic designer, good friend. Um, yeah, and we're just going to be chatting to him about creative process and. He's white. a teacher, isn't it? And a designer. Just too. Well, meaty he was a designer before topic. he was a Correct. teacher. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, he had to, he had to take up teaching because he couldn't do the design work. <laughs> <laughs> If you can't, if you can't do, it, do, do it, teach. teach. If you can't teach, teach Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of what you're getting into. Yeah. To come back at you. Yeah. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> but it's true. I started teaching. I was off. I had a friend that was working at, um, who I went to uni with, actually. It was, I studied with. Is this okay? Is it, is yeah, this just, just, like, yeah, you went, uh, started with a friend. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he invited me in to do like a day a week of um, visiting uh, professional, which is actually a really good gig to get on because it's good money. You could just walk in the place, chat with students and leave and there's no preparation or anything to be... Well, there should be, but there so wasn't you, at that you, time. you lecture at where, sorry? Leeds. I was a uh, start at Huddersfield, but I lecture at Leeds Arts University now, oh, okay, two okay. days a week, yeah. I tried doing lecturing full-time, but I just did not like it. I was trying to do that and keep up my own practice going, but because I really like doing the work myself and it was, I just got really burnt out and um, yeah, two days a week is about right for me. You say so you lecture two days a week? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. And for, then how long have you been doing graphic design for? Uh, well, I started out as a illustrator, uh, maybe like 15 years ago. Um, and then gradually I kind, of, I kind of fell into it because I was kind of all right at it and people seem to like my work so I've got a few gigs, got a bit of work and started doing that freelance and then gradually moved into, I like the more holistic approach of graphic design projects of branding and identity and things like that. Mm-hmm. So I managed to... So decided. you had like a real job and then you like was doing that as a side I had a something. real bullshit job, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had a real bullshit job. I was working out, I was living in Cardiff at the time when I was start, starting out and then... Uh, working at British Gas. Okay. In an admin office. Sure. Nice. Well, was, no, just we were dealing with, it was a sales office. So there were salesmen who went out and make, made a lot of money and we were just processing stuff. Oh, right. Why were you in Cardiff? Uh, the girl who I uh, uh, was going out with lived there and she got to uni there and I moved right. down and decided to. So you grew up in Sheffield? No, I grew up in Barnborough, which is about 15. 15 miles away. Right, so yeah. South Yorkshire, yeah. yeah. And then uh, you did uni where? Sunderland. Okay. Oh, wow. It's been about a bit. Yeah. Was it Was it a graphics design? No, it's, it's fine art. Oh, okay. Because um, I was all, I was good at drawing, but I don't, anyone who's good at anything is only good at it because I do it a lot or practice doing it a lot. Okay. I, I'm thinking I'm, I'm of that opinion. That... Is that you? Sorry. Do you want to <laughs> mute it? Can, right, if, right, okay, this is a rule. If, if you get a text message and you haven't muted it, you have to read it out live on the podcast. It's a photo, so I'm going to struggle. What kind of photo is it? Could, could be anything. Sorry. Um, you can let us see it. It's literally of a caravan on the back of somebody's car. It's, <laughs> it's, an, it's, 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 it's an old one. There we go. Very right. boring. I can mute it. Sorry about that. Sorry, Nick. Right. Sorry, Nick. You were you went to Sunderland. Sorry, I studied fine art studied fine because art. I was doing. Um, I was good at drawing. I thought that'd be dead easy. And um, yeah, fine art because you were good at drawing. Right, right, right. And yeah. I thought that'd be easy. Yeah, you know, like uh, I didn't know what I was doing. Most kids. I mean, kids have to know what they're doing now, right? Because yeah. they're paying so much money to go to uni. Sure. So a lot. Well, at least the kids I teach seem to have a real good plan and like you know why I'm why I'm doing this because I'm assuming it's because. Uh, you know, there's, maybe there's more pressure. I don't know. What do you think on them to kind of know what they're doing? I didn't have a clue what I was doing at that point. I, just, I don't we, think kids we, know what they're doing. I think we, we anybody who chooses fine art is kind of like pretty pretty vague, aren't they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I did film studies, so it's just a very similar thing. Yeah. And then you fine did... Fine art, yeah. Fine art. So we, I, we haven't got an opinion on that. Great. 
vague's good. It is, that's it's where a I very was. That's vague where I was course, though, isn't it? And then you get there and you're like, and then all the tutors are really vague with you as well. It's like, what <laughs> yeah, do I do? Yeah. Like, well, we it's just know. this weird, like... <laughs> <Just> get on. <laughs> There's some lectures for you to go to and then... That was fine art. Make college, some work. Wasn't it? Like, go away oh. and make stuff. Yes, but it teaches you to be really proactive and... Yeah. You do. You have to find your feet, and you have to, or not, and then you. <laughs> oh well, or not, or drop out, or yeah, or get in a band, or do yeah, various yeah, yeah. other things. It's that just you a can place do. to meet people. Yeah, yeah, like-minded, creative people. I guess you, you know. Yeah, good. yeah. A lot of the people that were there were of a similar ilk. Like didn't really know what they're doing, but were good at certain things that were in that within that kind of art kind of. Yeah. Category. So what did you do at A level that led you into art? Uh, uh, English language and economics. I don't know why I put ec- stuff economics on I there. I did economics at A level as well. That's really weird. I did business studies at A level. That's a good. You had. St- I'm not. I'm no at business. Idea. Yeah, I am. Well, we're right good at business. Law, psychology, and economics at A level. And uh, horrific. Uh, Mate, I, I don't think we had a clue. They're all kind of books. useful. Did you have loads of books? Did you have? Did the yeah, other yeah, day yeah. we had to like carry around like from economics. Yeah, well, yeah. from all of them. But like, I was um, literally carrying around like twenty kilos a day. Did you just, have a, a careers advisor at your school? Did I have a no? I can't no. remember having one. We had a machine that you typed answered questions. I think ours is a bit like that. You just like and then you answer questions out. on it, and it said what you like. These are the I things you might be likely to be. Yeah. Like a kudos machine yeah, or something yeah. like that. I think right, it was called. Yeah. Or yeah, a QDOS yeah. program. There's definitely a Q in there somewhere. I don't, yeah. know, I don't know where that just like. So they they really need to head. think about that. They're expecting <laughs> that, obviously the kid and their parents to have like a really good relationship in, in, in which they can direct their kids to. Because your grades really count about what you're doing later life. Yeah, no. but I guess nowadays they're a bit more. Are they a bit more directed? A bit more. I don't know the numbers now, so I just haven't got a clue what any of it is. Yeah, so I think I guess we did. We found our way didn't we yeah, Did we? yeah. No. I think we lost <laughs> no no a, I think anyone's like night doing a podcast <laughs> <laughs> I think like your ability to adapt to different situations is a skill that like most successful people have you know you can yeah. usually find some way of like right uh, getting on or and keeping so moving just making use it's of nature over energy. nurture yeah keeping doing stuff oh, keeping yeah. proactive uh, no no I'd say there's a uh, you know, you're learning as you go along. So right. it's like a, it takes nurture. Yeah. No nature. Just nurture. No nature. No. We're no. talking about making decisions that are like a really, like time in your life when you have no idea what you want to do or who you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're making really vital life decisions. You decided to go to Sunderland to do fine art. Yeah. What informed that decision, do you reckon? Uh, because I was just good at, I was good at good drawing. At drawing. Yeah. But I'm saying I'm not saying that was a correct thing to do. But right. it did have some like accidental effects, like computers were invented. This is a, this is a long time ago, and we had like a graphics module. Thirties, wasn't it? When computers were invented, I mean, they had a bank. They brought a bank of Mac, new Macs. Oh, okay, into, big time. Uni, into the uni. <laughs> you can into take it with you if you want. Into the uni. <laughs> and um, all right. What the big, what the the see through ones or the no no the prior to that ones. these are that sixteen megabyte hard drives. Oh yeah. Uh, but I really, I really enjoyed the, having a scanner and drawing some scanning stuff in right, and then right. edi- editing it online. Right, it was magic. Photoshop had one layer. Magic. You couldn't have more than one layer in Photoshop at that time. No way. Um, oh, was it the, what, the first one that had more than one layer? But anyway, you could play around it, and I really liked that. I did screen printing, but found that I really enjoyed it. Uh, the effect but I found the process way too long I didn't have the patience yeah. for the process so working with a computer and right. a photocopier I spent a lot of time just messing about with a photocopier getting different effects making graphics printing them out and then oh, wow. spending feeding them back through the photocopier and screwing stuff up and, so and you reckon that if maybe you didn't have those Macs didn't have the photocopier you would have maybe dropped out because like screen printing Ugh. I'd have carried on with screen printing it would have been awful yeah. I really found like a that was like a bit of a uh, a bit of a moment with that well, I really like. I found it easy, right? And I found the stuff yeah. I was doing was like, oh, right. So it's, mechanical it's, reproduction and printing and font, yeah, yeah, exactly. something that's really, yeah, quite. So important there's like a load of resistance and like you lock doors, and then there's one bit of like least resistance and and a bit, yeah. That bit. But I found working with uh, obviously working with a, sh- a machine of sorts when you're screen printing. But I found you're talking about process. Uh, a machine that you could do things to and that'd do something yeah. and come out the other end. Yeah. And then you've got, 
you've got a bit of control, but you're dealing with a process that you can have, you can start something off, but then there's some kind of, something else happens in it. They're kind of like almost magical, weren't they, photocopiers when they first came around? You know, uh, like just yeah, the yeah, whole, yeah. well, sticking your face on them and all, all mm. the stuff you could actually... Well, peop- they make technology, don't they? And then people like you will like use it for a way it. that it's not been intended, but in a really cool way, like sticking your face on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We used to break it a lot. It's just a library yeah. photocopy. Just used to spend a lot of time, fill my card up with credit and just spend a lot of time breaking it. But so, then you figure out how it works and how to kind of control it. So it, where yeah. did all the font-based stuff start coming in? Oh, that's way later. Well, I was interested in graphic design as general, so I liked typography, but I was never really a typographer at all. Um, I just enjoyed mashing stuff together and that kind of collage of effects. And it was a time when computers had been used more for design, so everything looked really slick and polished and shiny graphic yeah, design. Yeah, shiny. And the, my, I think my like thing that made me stand out in terms of being an illustrator was everything had loads of texture in it. I'd scan envelopes in and put, and put layer that with drawings and everything I did had loads and loads of texture in it. Uh, that you, you know, it was tactile, it looked tactile. So that was your voice and that, that didn't take very long to develop? Uh, no, that took ages to develop. Okay. I left uni and um, I was utterly depressed and I, that kind of stayed with me for about the next 10 years. It gradually like weaning off. <laughs> for the next 25 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just out of it. Hiya. Did, the, did the, uh, what, did you need to switch that on? Uh, it? No, it was, it was a couple of things. It was uni. It was going to uni. I'd also been like quite active as a kid, quite sp- sporty, like playing football, running, whatever. And I think it was a, a couple of things. Like when I went to uni, I just started drinking, smoking, whatever else. And I stopped being active. I stopped doing sport. And I think, obviously, right. that's a real, you know, that's a real good way of just keeping your mind, like, yeah. uh, fairly positive. And I stopped doing all that, and I think that was a big thing, as well as not really knowing what I was going to do afterwards. Yeah. Uh, I was really depressed. So uh, I was seeing a girl at the time, and she had a friend in New York who was waiting tables, and she was going to go out there. And I was like, I've got nothing else to do. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out with you. Right. So I went and stayed on her floor in Manhattan. And um, I eventually got a job waiting tables um, in a restaurant called David Copperfield. Um, <laughs> the David Copperfield. It was named after. Yeah, it was like oh. an English theme. Like loads of beers and oh, served right. like beef wellington and burgers and stuff like that. It was actually a decent bar. but Because oh, uh, you had the accent, right? Yeah, well, yeah, they put the girls out. I just managed. I had to like deliver food on a crap bike around Manhattan at first. This is up a... Wow. West, what? Upper West, Upper East Side, sorry. So uh, residential, not touristy part of Manhattan. Okay. See, I never knew any of this. I yeah, so it. I had to prove that I was worthy of work. So I was the delivery guy on, a, on this crap bike. So, so they, you have to say, hello, your David Copperfield has arrived. No, <laughs> I just stand under food and they'd like go, <laughs> why is it never an American that delivers food? <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be so, I'd be... You've got very good teeth for an English person, actually, I just realised. Thanks. So they was <laughs> got something new. So um, you were like... Uber before Uber Eats. Uber Eats. Yeah, yeah. I was just, it was a lot of times just me stood in a service lift of, of an apartment block with four Mexicans <laughs> 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 delivering <laughs> food. But the, uh, in Manhattan, I think it's the same now. I don't know that it was it was cheaper. It was as cheap, if not cheaper, to order food in than it was to buy food out and cook it yourself. Yeah, so a loads of people just order stores, food. Right. Yeah. So there was a lot of business there. I noticed that in San Fran the other year that like everything seems to be kind of balanced, kind of make you go out to eat rather than buy stuff and eat in because yeah, it's yeah, yeah. probably as cheap to just go and go out go and yeah. eat it out yeah yeah. yeah 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 it was definitely the case then. food's super expensive to buy in the supermarkets and mm. you're just like well you might as well just go there because it's virtually the same price we ain't got to do any dishes yeah 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 and it's uh, it's weird it'll happen here <laughs> I'm sure well, it's getting like that anyway. How many times do you still use Just Eat a lot and things yeah. like that? I mean, I'm using it a Not lot. Not just, sorry, I meant the thing, the help out to eat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Eat help. Help. It's really cheap. Yeah. So you then you started waiting, waiting tables, got promoted. Waiting tables, got promoted. This is after uni? Yeah, straight okay. after uni, yeah. The year after uni. Um, we managed to rent a place in Queens. Um, it was a massive culture shock coming from a really quite small place. It was it? incredible. Yeah, it was it was nuts. I mean, I spent the first week or so like just walking the streets trying to find a job. This is January, so it's Freezing. knee deep in snow every morning. <laughs> I and mean, then they clear the streets; they're decent. They can clear the streets there, <laughs> not like here where we yeah, yeah, grind yeah. to a halt. Um, so I was walking around Manhattan looking for a, a job, 
Uh, but eventually, I, I had a job at a swing club, not that kind of swing club, for like a night being a busboy. Sure. Do you know what a busboy is? Uh, taking the glasses off the table? Yeah, it's the one below a waiter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you bring everyone, you know, in, in the States, they bring bread and water out to the table as soon as you sit down. The busboy does that. Then the waiter comes over and takes your order and the busboy busses the, the, the empty plates away from the table right. when you've done. But that's what I was doing for a night. But I think the bar guy, it was, it's a pretty kind of revered role in the, in the States, the, the guy uh, working the bar. There's no, not like a twelve mix, people. A there's mixologist just, or there's just one guy them. working oh, okay. the bar. Owns loads. You can. Earn, it's yeah. a decent living. You can yeah. make a decent living. And the best guys, you know, if, if you're a really good bar guy, that you'll work like eleven till one, like the busiest hour on a Friday night, and you'll make enough money for the week, just because you'll be serving everyone drinks. Tips. Everyone leaves you loads of tips. Right. You'll make enough money for the week. Well, thank you, did that. Crazy. Um, so you lasted one night. The bar guy saw me cutting the bread up, and I was. I remember remembering my making a comment about me squashing the baguette as I'm sure, like, sure, sure. can you not squash the bread? <laughs> Sorry. Is that, your, is that your best wow. New York accent? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, end up waiting tables. But on the off days when I had a day off, I mean, we didn't get paid anything because it was kind of illegal for us to be working there. We didn't have a working visa. Right. But this is pre-9-11, so it's a lot less secure. Yeah. Um, and you went brown, so it was all right. I wasn't proud. Yeah. I am now. I've been <laughs> in the sun this morning. Um, um, yeah, on the days off, we, were, we weren't getting paid anything, but on a good week, we'd, we might make $1,000 just on tips. Wow. But we'd have a day off. I was living with this girl, but we'd have alternate days off. And on my days off, I was still going down, still making things. I was still going down to like Staples or the nearest place that had a fo- photocopy of drawing stuff, going down, photocopying it and making stuff on just sheets of A4, A3, whatever. I eventually got some work in a record shop uh, downtown Manhattan and had a little, a tiny exhibition, like five, six pieces of work on the wall. But the thing was that was, I was at, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was that depressed, but I thought, hey, you're still doing stuff. You know, there's still this thing that wants you to kind of make stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. So this is a sign you ought not to ignore. <laughs> and so I carried on doing that one guy emailed me about the work saying I really like it he was working as a uh, like a web guy in Manhattan at the time and I, I got enough of a buzz off this one guy emailing me saying I like your work that's pretty cool we've met up since I've been back years after I've been to his apartment oh, no and now he's a really good illustrator not doing web stuff anymore but um but yeah that was that was a key moment I was still doing stuff I was still making something right and that's what kind of thought you need to keep doing this because there's this you enjoy this process. Yeah. Is the thing. Yeah. So did you go back not to... Not waiting tables. I did enjoy it a bit, but I'm not really quite Did happy. you go back to study after that then? Mm. Or did you... No, that's when I went. After there, I kind of had a bit, like a year, I came back. So I spent a year there, uh, came back. We went our separate ways. The relationship wasn't really working out. We went our separate ways. Never saw her again after that, actually. So, um, so now, it's not a bad thing so sometimes. Now, now, it definitely, it? definitely wasn't. Uh, not, that, not, <laughs> not, that, not, that no we, hard feelings. Not that we fell out, but we just we never we like both our parents picked us up at the airport and we just went our separate ways. <laughs> where did she? Where was she? She from? was from Workington. Oh, okay. Cumbria. Crazy. Yeah. Um, but that was before social media and mm-hmm. other stuff. So you just, you wouldn't. No. No. Write a letter or... You have to call somebody. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, wait at a phone box or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be here at this specific time. This is something you don't know about, isn't it? Uh, social media. Yeah, yeah we're Generation X, man. Are you Gen X? Uh, Gen I'm a millennial. Z? Are you a millennial? Yeah, by like a year. Asshole. <laughs> it's no, all I'm your pre, fault. I'm pre-internet. I was 84, I was born. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. That's not far off. I think that's a key thing. It's an experience of life before, like, there's, it a, there's a big difference. Yeah. Went insane. Yeah. There's a thing in well, Ma- one of Malcolm Gladwell's books about yeah, yeah. when Bill Gates, uh, quite similar to how you were talking about at university, he had all those MacBooks come in and the, in the, in the photocopier where he was born in this really specific place, just so happened to be, and then when he went to uni, they got the f- this or college. They got the first shipment of 
computers ever in the U- US and then all these things happened in his life where he just so happened to be in a position where like he was at the cutting edge unbeknownst to himself and then kind of leveraged or took the opportunities to get to the place where he is now mm. it's quite like, an interesting theory about how it's not all about hard work and graft there's mm. actually a lot of luck involved in yeah. these type of things yeah, yeah. I think, you know, a lot of time you create your own kind of look. And it's a lot about timing, isn't it? So it's the same thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, then you came back to the... I came back and I spent about a year not really knowing what I was doing again. And um, But I'd got this thing now I wanted to do in, when I, in, my sp- in my spare time. But, you know, that's something that I was continuing to do. Then I got in touch with a girl. Uh, uh, the girl was living in Cardiff and ended up moving down there. And then got the ended up getting a job. I waited the tables for a week there. Then I got a job where she was working at I've British Gas. I've got experience Gas. at this. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember it's all awful for a day. Yeah, this is really bad. <laughs> and there's no it. tips in, in, in <laughs> yeah. Wales. The min- minimum wage. It's just wage. a like, meagre wage. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a tip for you. Fuck off back to England. <laughs> <laughs> There was once where in when in Manhattan where I served a table of four guys and they just came in for lunch. So it's something like Caesar salads or whatever. And they let their bill was sixty dollars. This is how long it was. Their bill was sixty dollars, but they left a tip of sixty dollars as well. I think they were gay and had shorts on that day. I think that's uh, that's how you make <laughs> oh, money. Hot pants and muscle vest. <laughs> Always. Just a vest, no muscles. <laughs> Um, yeah, he's coming in. <laughs> he worked a day in Cardiff. It's because he came in in like hot pants. Because like, that worked back in Manhattan. <laughs> the roller skates. I didn't get any tips today. I don't know why. And I got oh, fired. Man. I could have been head waiter in that place. <laughs> you don't get tips in <laughs> Wales. <laughs> head waiter gets tips for different things. <laughs> uh, but I eventually got a job working at British Gas where she was working. And then. That gradually weaned off that. I gradually started doing like, I think I did start working part time and then um, uh, trying to do this illustration. I was still in touch with this guy from uh, New York who'd liked, emailed me and liked my work and he'd built me a little website because I didn't know how to build websites and he was in that game and built me a website, put some work up. And I started doing that a bit more and started uh, uh, making things and sending them to people. Well, place in London and trying to get work. I eventually right. cold calling people basically. Uh, no, just making like li- not little mail outs, spending time photocopying stuff, right. and making these little mail outs and getting the uh, artists and writers handbook. Yeah, right, okay, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, finding yeah. names in that and sending, yeah. oh, okay. sending it to art directors and things like that, trying to get work. And eventually built up a bit more. Um, so, so was, being really proactive, so it was a massive part of getting you where you are today. Oh yeah, to absolutely. Honest. Absolutely. Um, who who were you like mentored by? Who was telling you how help helping you or no I one? Wasn't no. No. It's it interesting. Just, it was just yeah. I was just kind of like following. I knew I had a thing with what I was doing because this one guy emailed me, <laughs> and I really like what I was doing. This like process again. That texture thing is important. What that I mentioned earlier in in the work, and um, I knew I had something that was good. I really liked it. It was different to. Uh, everything else that I was seeing out there. And when once I started putting it online, I was getting a, a good reaction from it. Um, eventually got um, uh, an agent in London by hook or by crook. She, uh, uh, this woman had just left a bigger agency and started a small one with about six, seven people, which was perfect for me, which meant I was going to get a lot of coverage when she was out. She wasn't taking like 20 portfolios out. Yeah. She was just taking six or whatever. And I started getting some uh, big bigger jobs, big clients. Um, yeah. But that was, um, we moved her, the girl I was living with then, we bought a house in Cardiff, the girl I was living then, uh, her family decided, well, we kind of all decided, they were living in Brighton, decided to emigrate to New Zealand. And I was like, yeah, Cardiff's all right, but I'm not stuck here. So we sold our house and we went to New Zealand. Uh, um, and okay. <laughs> we were there for like three months. They had a house just south in a little bay called Rapaki, Bay just south of Christchurch with a pool and it was big enough for all of us to go there to live there and we went and stayed there for about three months but my grandfather died uh, Christmas and I came back got a cheap flight with Qantas whatever with her uh, came back for the funeral 
And then we had a bit of a bust up. My grandfather dying was a bit of a big like shock to my system. I've had grandparents die before and it had been upsetting, but it kind of been okay. But this was a real shock. And we, we had a big argument split up and she went back to New Zealand where her family were and I stayed here. And that's kind of the reason I'm in Sheffield now. Um, I started working, I was still getting the, the my life was a wreck. Um, but I still was getting decent How old jobs are you in. This is, uh, I'm probably 31, 32. <laughs> I'm still so old. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'd kind of flipped the table on my life at that point and gone, right, I'm going to start again and I'm going back home. And I was living in my grandparents' house. Um, in Sheffield? Uh, no, in uh, Goldthorpe near Barnborough. Yeah. And doing it up to sell, but living there at the same time. Cause, you know, I didn't want to live with my parents because um, we would just we'd just get on each other's nerves all the time. So I was living in his house, which was great, but still working. And eventually got um, a studio in Sheffield. And suddenly, from thinking that like I had to go somewhere else to find, to, like to move away from home to find something that was interesting, I suddenly felt really welcome in Sheffield. I just the people that I met and I talked to through. Uh, had an exhibition and it just suddenly felt really warm and cozy. So why am I looking elsewhere? Sheffield seems mm. really good. Um, so that's why I ended up back here. I had um, this conversation with a guy earlier. He's like a pilot for BA and he's come and we're doing jujitsu together. And I was like, well, if you're still working for BA, why do you live in Sheffield? And he just went, it's two hours on a train to London. And like, yeah, yeah. I can get picked up at the airport, uh, at the train station by my wife and like, 20 minutes time we're like sat up on Burbage looking at the sun go down he's like it's perfect he's why would I want to live anywhere else yeah, yeah. everybody's really nice everything's here and it's like oh, I guess but if you've always lived here you don't really yeah I don't think you see know. that yeah I didn't spend a lot of time in Sheffield as a kid. Like, I had friends that used to come to Sheffield on a Saturday. We used to go mm. to Doncaster to walk around town <laughs> like people would come to Sheffield to go out in Sheffield yeah exactly um, so I'd never really spent a lot of time here before so I really considered it but as soon as I'd, I I was doing it just seemed to make a lot of sense yeah i don't really put my finger on why it's quite a yeah. young city as well isn't it with all the students yeah. and everything else it was so. a big it was did have a bit of a buzz about that time like the art scene was yeah, quite, yeah. it was yeah, yeah it was really good at one point that yeah. it seems to have dropped off lately, yeah absolutely but, but um, it, it was there's a big yeah. like s1 was kind of still buzzing yeah and yeah loads of people just out of uni that were really talented and yeah there were loads of stuff going off mm. it just seemed really like interesting and exciting i'm trying to think that's like when was this 15 years ago? Uh, yeah, it's, it's maybe not quite that, but 10, 12. 10, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and there's a good music scene and there's plenty yeah, there's of bars. Yeah, there's a few bands. And, yeah, 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 bars, bands, yeah, everything was kicking off, to be honest. It's, it's yeah, ob- yeah, obviously, yeah. Yeah, just seemed really yeah. exciting. A lot of energy, but yeah. But you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> the energy's just dropped down off. There. Yeah. Just down there, yeah. Spitting um, distance. Aspiring. I've heard Bolsover is the place to be now. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the only reason to like, it's so expensive. Well, not so expensive, but comparatively to what's around it. Yeah. Sheffield's a really expensive place to buy a house, it seems. Well, for yeah. what you in, get. In the nice areas that you'd actually want to live in. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Could, it's very, uh, I love it. I think the cafes are amazing here. I lived in London for a couple of years. And uh, it was just manic. Yeah, I've never done that. I'm also interested in that. So expensive, so manic. The buzz is amazing. But we, we did two years and, and then we got pregnant and we were just like, we can't have a kid here. It's just too crazy. Whereabouts in London were you? We were in North London. We were in um, Muswell Hill. Okay. Which was really expensive. <laughs> and Where uh, were you working then? Um, I, was, I was just doing freelance video stuff anywhere, all over. Doing weddings, music videos. So that's your core thing? Video, yeah, Make I'm a videographer, video. yeah. yeah. Well, I was until the pandemic hit, and now I'm a, I have, I guess I'm still a videographer. I do podcasts. Now he's a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm a YouTube producer, more accurately, not even a YouTuber. Um, but I just started doing weddings again, actually. I've done two, so uh, like last month. And so I do about five weddings a year. And then corporate stuff starting to pick up again. Got a couple of jobs next month. So what was your uh, thing with with the comedian? Do okay. <laughs> what was your was that just? A- so I um, whenever a big uh, US comic comes over because I'm really into podcasts and more specifically comedy ones, 
and for some reason American comedy ones a vibe I've been listening to podcasts since they started really um, and whenever a big guy comes over to tour Europe I generally like DM them and say do you want a free video so I've done that for a few pretty big guys and then um, able to use those videos to pitch to other guys so this comic came over as part of a podcast that he does which is like this huge podcast it's, they're called The Dollop and it's yeah. always top 50 in the world like it's mad so I DM'd one of them just shot in the dark and he's like yeah come and come and do it so I made a I did a highlight video of their gig in um, Manchester at a theatre then I kept in contact with the guy one of the guys because I just chatted to him loads backstage and um, kept like giving him tips because he was doing loads of like social media content and I was kept like saying oh it'll look better if you do this it'll sound better if you do it and then he started doing a live stream improv comedy thing, basically improvised stand up because there was no stand up gigs going because it was all shut down. I think down. I watched some of this in my brief bit of research of him just the guy, with a screen and something comes up and he talks and about he just, it. And just riffs on it. Yeah, yeah. And so I edited a couple like 30 second highlights, like really, really snappy, sent them to him. And he's like, right, I'm going to pay you to do this. So then I started doing that, and now I'm like taking over his whole game. Oh, wow, nice. It's like rebranded him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, doing all this stuff. And he's like, yeah, come on then. Oh, that's great. Yeah, do that. Because he's just a writer. He wrote on Arrested Development. Yeah, I looked at his uh, CV. Yeah, it's pretty good. But again, the interesting part about this is you were really proactive and you were firing yeah, yeah, see, things off yeah. and doing stuff. So and that's something you do taking, a lot. It's what that, what's the thing? Is it you miss 100% of the shots you don't yeah. take? Yeah, so yeah. like just putting those lines out and trying to... But I think you have to do that if you're self-employed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it's almost like... Especially as a creative, because a lot of the time people don't know that they need you. Yeah. If you get what I mean. It's like, I no, had to no you need this rebranding. Your brand Gar looks shit. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you Gar show Gar it. If you like, oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do. If you're watching this, I love you. you need to but yeah, he hasn't got a clue. Yeah. Like, he didn't understand branding. I had to explain branding to him. Yeah. Like why it's valuable and he was like yeah oh yeah i guess it is yeah let's do that so did that and then i'm like right the production value has got to like skyrocket for what you're doing and he's like why i'm like well because this and this and this and he's like oh okay cool then so um i think you you work with a lot of clients and then you do one job for somebody and it just doesn't they don't get it and then some and then every now and then you, you find someone that gets it and will uh, sees the value in what you're doing and then you continue to work with them for ages That's yeah sure yeah. we were talking about earlier wasn't it just the clients that kind of just you can click with a bit and understand what you're doing and it's not yeah. a battle yeah yeah, yeah well and, and we're at the level where we don't have to battle anymore do we so it's yeah yeah you just find someone that you like oh, there's this guy um at this massive global conglomerate evil corporation who um i get on with so well he's not my best mate met him at the gym and we've oh. done so much work together, Jim James. Bro. So he's a marketing director at like global at this huge place. And that's where I've got all my money from, from my house. <laughs> wow. But he just gets it. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. he understands marketing. He understands the value of video in that, in that the picture. And, and, uh, and it's just so easy to work with. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. That's a joy. It's, just, it's, it's lucky to find people like that. But if you shoot, you shot. You're yeah. gonna find them, aren't you? Yeah, mm. yeah. And this guy in the states that's he's a he's a big deal, like in in his area. Like I'm, I've been a huge fan of him for years, and he just gets what I'm saying. Like I, we're on the same level, and so I'm getting like really consistent work. That's with, amazing. Which is what we do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. We were talking about you, though, weren't we? <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> is that dog dead or is it? Dog, is he still alive? No, I can dead. smell something. No, he stinks. My dog Scooby is uh, on the floor. He's a nine-year-old chocolate Labrador, so he stinks. But no, uh, I couldn't really smell him. By the way, yeah. could you it's smell him when you walked in the door? No. Yeah, <laughs> a, l a little bit. I haven't been in Richard's house for a while. Could just be <laughs> like this. Is what Richard's house smelled like? I don't remember Richard's house smelling like dog shit. <laughs> Scooby came in the door and made this place his own, marked the territory. So again, he sorry about that. On my floor, um, he's on the floor back there. You won't be able to see him. It's okay. He's wearing a nap in. Is he now. breathing? Yeah, he's breathing. Okay, good. He's got about a year left in him. Oh, bless him. I give him about ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you leave the room, <laughs> don't know why he died. <laughs> <laughs> just, just got strangled with a jiu-jitsu key. 
<laughs> Strangled himself. Gave up the world to live. Mm. Got a great new hat, though. And then how <laughs> did you end up lecturing like a professor? Like a real... Um, yeah, so um, work went really well in uh, Sheffield, but I kind of turned into more of a, a designer to start doing more branding identity jobs. Um, and then a friend got in touch who I'd gone to university with and said he fancied doing setting a brief for the final year student. So I just went in and did a bit of a, bit of a dance and set a brief for uh, the students there. And then went back about a month later and, and did a crit with all the students and enjoyed that. And then I managed to get back in and do the associate uh, lecture, I think, or visiting professor, whatever. Each uni calls it something different. But that's a really good gig to get on because you get it paid a decent wage for just going and chatting to students, which is kind of kind of exhausting chatting to like 25 students every day about their idea, about different ideas at the time. But you could, it was, I found it really interesting. Uh, I did a one day a week for a while, then two days, and eventually a position came up that I could apply for. And I thought I'll give it a, give it a quiet. Is that unhelpful for your work? No, no, I think the, it went downhill for a while with my work. Sorry, I mean, um, oh, yes, you could talk yeah, about yeah, that, sorry, but yes. what I mean is talking about the process with yeah, people absolutely. that don't really understand it. Does that help your own? Yeah, process? because a lot of the time, as you probably do, all the, uh, like with anything, um, <laughs> you just know what you're doing, so you do it. But actually, if you've got to stop and think about yeah. why am I doing this, what, what am I doing next, what is this process for write down, you actually go, oh, you actually do a lot of different stuff that mm. you're not even considering yeah. at all. Uh, that you just do automatically, subconsciously. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is interesting. To talk and then about. your work dropped off. Why? Just because you lost just because I ended up doing more uh, of that. I was doing that. It was kind of like a, you know, I, I felt lucky to be doing the freelance thing. And I thought I'm going to have to have something in the locker that's a steady <laughs> job yeah. that I can rely on if this doesn't go so well. Yeah. Freelance is always that. Uh, if you've not got that regular kind of client or clients is like where's you know Stressful. the check in too much time there's also that anxiety mm. isn't there mm. especially when you you know yeah there's also that anxiety as you're getting older as well yeah, the, 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 yeah. you get the, you get more confident about it. the need for money seems to be whereas when you're young oh I'm skinned it doesn't matter yeah yeah but yeah. then as you get older you're like no I need to have some money yeah but it's not <laughs> even going to pay for his cremation that's going to cost a fortune for example <laughs> he's a pig dog <laughs> that's a lot of ashes <laughs> Neutral bullet. <laughs> put him into bits and pour him away. <laughs> um, what are we talking about? Fertilize the garden. Getting as you money, go. Making money. Yeah, yeah making, making money. money is important. So I thought I needed is this the thing in the locker. Is the money aspect being a big thing with it? With what you were doing and the... Well, it's got, it's, yeah, of course it is. The jobs... You, did I don't know what I'm trying to get at here. <laughs> just let him... Just. Um, yeah, was like... The aspect of money, like a quite, goal, yeah, to well, obviously, it and is, it'd be great. I just, I just wanted to be in a position where I was doing what I wanted to do and I was getting paid for it. If I was getting paid more for it, great, but I was actually having a, a point where I was just, I was in control of my life and I was doing what I wanted to do. Yeah, Com I'm just repeating myself now, but um, a couple of big paycheck, good clients, yeah, that's kind how of it was happening a little bit uh, and... in early career. Was I was getting a couple of decent jobs and like kind of regular stuff that was allowing me to kind of balance, but you never knew when the big job was coming up next. And some, yeah. you know, it was like, yeah, uh, feast and famine kind of thing. Um, so I thought the uni uh, thing or some kind of regular income was good, but it also could feed into it, um, feed into my work, like we were just talking about, thinking about my process, thinking about what am I doing uh, well, well that and it, and it did I've found that with teaching at jujitsu and stuff you know like breaking things down for people yeah. and explaining to Big somebody time. else how you have to do this thing makes it easier for when you have to do it yeah you know, yeah, yeah for when yeah, you're actually right. doing it yourself you're like oh oh shit I never I usually skip that bit out or I don't I'm not conscious of when I'm doing that yeah exactly they yeah. say that there's, the, there's that test on um, uh, someone's giving a lecture <laughs> that the person learning the least or retaining the least information is this we can't is this going out to can we cut maybe cut this past yeah sure. is the uh, the person learning the least is the student the person learning the most is the lecturer because whatever you're delivering you have to go through and learn then you have to put it in you have to put it into a presentation and then you have to present it so once you've right. got to that stage you've gone through it three or four times yes maybe more yeah, yeah. And so you've got it down pat 
the yeah. students switch off in like 10 or 15 minutes. Or Unless you've hung, got some like... Or they're hungover or they just yeah, exactly. don't want to be there. The or, person yeah. learning the least in any lecture is a student. <laughs> <laughs> the, so the lecturer's learning the most. And it's really it, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, but unless, you know, you want to, yeah, I don't know. Obviously, they learn more. You're just talking about a lecturer's example. You learn more by just, you know, doing. Yeah, it's self-directed yeah, yeah, yeah. study and self-discovery yeah. in many and ways. And you just, they, they take some nuggets yeah. from whatever well, you've you, said. You, the best way to teach somebody is to lead them to something or, oh. Have yeah. You, you're oh, not imparting knowledge and saying, yeah. here, swallow this knowledge. You, you, learn, you, just, you, just, you just encourage them to ask questions and be curious. Yeah. I think creativity is a creativity mm. is a search for something yes. that you never Ooh. quite find. I think that's... nine minutes. Interesting. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, say that again. That's the chair, <laughs> Into the mic. So. Creativity is a what? I think it's... I was thinking about it earlier. And I, because I was going to say, what do you think creativity is or being creative is? Because everyone can be creative. Yeah. You know, an accountant is creative, but you're yeah. not going to see that person as a creative. I could do with a creative accountant. <laughs> <laughs> I think creative, creativity is a search for something. It's a curiosity and just some people can't be bothered to look. <laughs> I think that's something that you have naturally as a kid. It is, you, yeah, it's, it's a like naivety an, it's that you want to know, you want to find yeah, out. Yeah. And it's about those things you find on the way. And I think some people kind of, decide some things as they as they get older um th so things so they don't have that eagerness to search they've kind of got their kind of set uh way of looking at the world to, in a in a larger sense and then no, there isn't that cu curiosity anymore um but that can be quite like a uh you know that can be a, a micro thing on something some yeah. small subject that you want to find out about but just a a general curiosity i think is in a in a, in a search for something is kind of the, the basis of any creative project really i think or a creative process it, it, yeah because you, you don't something. know what you're actually wanting to yeah. achieve you're just heading out with your sword and your shield Ooh, let's see what we can find it's yeah. like an adventure to get yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. the destination and you're yeah. going to find a few things that are more relevant than others and you think oh yeah i can use these yeah I can use these, these are, and you can project them something else as being really relevant. Or you might this is the thing you're looking for. But you might right. store them away for a, another adventure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I think yeah. It, yeah. I think mm. it's, it's a search for uh, nice something. Nice metaphor. So how can we like practically apply that to stuff that we're doing, keeping, keeping that in the forefront of a project, is to remember that it's a search creativity is a search how would you practically use that um well in, in, in my it's like easy to talk about my, uh, projects that i'm doing as a, a, a designer anyway because your project will start with research so you're just searching and searching again mm. for something on subjects cons it might be aesthetic an aesthetic search it could be conceptual um uh, an ideological search for something and then you collect things um but that kind of, but that kind of process. If you're talking about creative process, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't start and end. When I think, right, I'm starting this project now, and I sit at my desk and start searching, or I sit on Google, <laughs> or I'm reading books or whatever. Um, I don't, I don't think it starts then. It's already started in someone else's, somewhere else, and I'm just picking up kind of tendrils of other stuff. If it's a song I'm hearing or a book I'm reading that makes spark something, or uh, an image of an artist that spent 20 years working on. I'm just pulling right. all these things that have already right. existed and already part of another process. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And even when it's the thing is done, I've made the thing be uh, whatever it is. There's always some part of the process that's ongoing and whoever's looking at it, you know, there's authorship there. You know, I'm the, they've had certain experience of ways of seeing things um, that's going to affect how they look at something or read something mm. that's going to kind of so it's kind of a, a uh, kind of a collage effect of kind of uh, in, in the readership of it so I don't you know no, anyone making something doesn't own that kind of uh, you know the, the meaning of it people are always going to look at yeah. and find something else yeah. whether it's really simplistic or whatever if you're reading you're reading a book 
you know, that's it's kind of the best example. You, the author's written it and it's saying really specific things. But obviously, you're going to read a sentence about a room, about a cafe somewhere. Yeah, the characters it's, and the scenery and everything it's else. It's going to be read completely your... different. The feelings, it might be saying something that you've had a personal experience yeah. about yeah. that's going to, it's going to be completely different. There's a kind of an anchor there, but it's all going to be completely different. Um, so that process doesn't even, you know, I, I think you're talking about creative process. That process doesn't stop there. It's not like a start and end, right? This job started and then it's finished. It's a porous thing. You know, it's continually, things are feeding into it. I think that's, yeah, I feel like that anyway. You'd mentioned simplicity then. Um, and that's something I wanted to question you about. Because a lot of your work that you've that I've done and the stuff you've just done for the denim people, what's it called? Oh, yeah, Pippin's Denim. Pippin's yeah. Denim. Um, the simplicity behind it, is that something that you actually search for as well? Because does the, is the, the acronym, the KISS, Keep It Simple Stupid. Oh, yeah, that was, Did, on, that was, an, that was a, uh, an army thing, wasn't it? Was it? About fixing tanks or trucks. Right, okay. They, uh, they put that on... Yeah, they use that there for, for the mechanics on trucks to, is that to, to that fix you it really easily. Try when you're doing a project? Yeah, because I want to make my job as simple as possible. But, but so also, it's, like, sometimes it's really hard. Cause I know like doing interiors and stuff, like keeping things minimal and polished and clean and the detail that has to go into everything yeah. is a lot harder to make something simple yeah, 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 than yeah. it is to make it complicated, if that makes sense. No, absolutely, because then you've got more of a blur of uh, uh, what's going on. But uh, yeah, completely. It's harder to write like a really short sentence that says exactly one than write a paragraph. And so do say, you do something and then take things away to try and get to the core of what you're doing, or is it? Yeah, I, I was looking at that. You're talking about materials, the things that you do using physical things. Yes, yeah. and I like to think of whatever I'm using, the graphics, the the marks that I've got as physical things and these are the things that I can move around and play with and there are only these things uh, to use and kind of uh, make something out of how can I make something else out of this if if it goes in like that graphic kind of uh, direction rather than a, a really conceptual direction yeah. whether that's that's dictated the outcome if it's pure graphics then uh then that's how I like I like to work. Um, the public uh, yeah, brand yeah. was a similar thing. So um, it Pub- was, it was it public's w- the bar in Sheffield. Do you, do you know? Of it? Yeah, it's a toilet. It's yeah. an old toilet. Yeah. So we went into the old toilet when it was still a toilet and found this. I found this book in what was it, the old kind of office. It had an office. In there, the janitor's the, office. The, ad, the admin, yeah. Uh, yeah, this kind of admin. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it was admin. I think it's more. It did well, it, some. It admin. did deal. It did do paperwork. But Basically, I think it just, was toilet paper. He just paperwork. chucked people out. Yeah. Uh, can I say this now? You <laughs> chucked yeah. people out that were found like shooting up in the toilet, sort of. Oh, I'm doing George Michaels and whatever. Yeah, else. yeah. Because it was a toilet with a shower <laughs> in it, like so people just went experience. <laughs> <laughs> Careless whisper. <laughs> Um, but he'd written in this logbook all the stuff that was going on in there people slipping down the, sh- the steps it's not badly written and, and uh, badly spelt but he'd written public in there and I was pushing that name anyway for a, a name of the, the bar but he'd, he'd scrawled public in there um, so we just I just lifted that out made the it was scribbled in biro so I just uh, made the graphic out of his handwriting and that's what stuck they really liked the story behind it so I was trying to find something that was there. Right. I don't want to particularly make anything. I, yeah. want, it, I want to find it somewhere. Right. This, yeah. like, so that was an actual But that's led to the, like going into the entire story. branding and the, the simplicity of the one word. And it's just led to yeah, a yeah, really yeah. nice, that's, that's an amazing bar. It's like won awards and all sorts of stuff now, hasn't it? Yeah, so. in the first year, won best bar, best place to drink in the UK, yeah. yeah. But in taking that, found that word, it also took the graphics apart, made little p- patterns out of it. But it all had a source. I don't kind of, I don't in, like to make stuff that just is for aesthetic sake. I like it to have kind of a reason for yeah. it to exist. In. Yeah. There's like, where has that come from? And there's a, not a story to it, but you know, there's a reason for it existing, not just because it looks nice. That's kind of. Yeah. I can't make anything without having a reason behind it. Hmm. I could, have to have a purpose behind every bit. When I make a video, like a corporate video or anything like that, I can't. I have to, usually when a client comes to me, they're like, oh, we just need a video doing for a thing. 
Mm. I'm like, okay, why? What's the audience? What do you want to say to them exactly? And they usually have to go away a couple of times and write out a script and really, and then they'll give me the script and I'll say, why didn't that? Why didn't that? What's mm. the point of that? What's the point of that? So I hate making work that's pointless because if I'm charging them a certain amount of money, I want I want to be adding value to their company. I want them to make more money off the video than they're paying me. You, so you, I want everything to have a real purpose else I'm not going to bother to do it. And usually with this, are you, uh, talk about simplicity, are you stripping stuff out? Uh, uh, like- well, yeah. So they'll come at me with a job and it will be vague. So there'll be lots of different ideas. A lot of times when someone's really... Uh, enthusiastic about making a video that have way too many ideas so it's too much on the wall yeah i'll yeah. cut it right down to like the core message and then i'll just make a how visual do you project around that and did that communicate core that, yeah. message mm. um yeah because i hate vague messaging i hate uh like whenever i'm watching anything reading anything so I, I hate it when there's like uh, fat on it uh, uh, yeah, I hate, yeah, yeah, I hate yeah. it waste being wa- my time wasted by an advert. Like, well, I want to know exactly what you're trying to sell me. I, I want to know. <laughs> it's just me. In many ways, no, no, that's, that's the similarity in your disciplines is that it's communication. Yeah, distilling. You're, you're trying to communicate distilling. something. Yeah. Same as with the graphics work yeah. you're trying to get. And and because of that blur, we talk about offship, only that blurriness of like what someone's going to see in it, you need to really distill it down. You de- right. talk about de- design, you're actually de-signing. You're taking away as much of the what is signed in the communique as possible till you've just got the what essence. wants to be said. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you've just got the, it's just signifying what you want. So I think you've, it's, uh, yeah, that design is de-signing. So you're removing everything till you've just, what you just said. Right. Just editing. got what you want. Yeah. And you're an editor. Yeah. It, it, a lot of my work is like, or it's therapy or like just talking to, so I'm doing some work for a, a a farmer who owns a uh, a wedding venue up in York and he's like oh marketing my marketing's just he came into the to the game about four years ago and he came from being an editor in Dubai like doing a lot of commercial work so he just smashed it like they had like 50 bookings of the first year and they just won all the awards and stuff and like recently he's like I just feel like I'm, I'm off the ball I need to just kick start my marketing so I got this idea this idea this idea this idea video ideas and it's taken us like a month and a half of going back and forth to realize what we want to do and um, before we even start doing it. So there's a lot of like back and forth, back and forth. I don't want, I've said it to him a few times, I don't want to take your money and come up, come away with a project that's not going to add value to you. Mm. So it's just this constant like, write me a script, you go away, write me a script and send it to me and then I'll figure mm. out. Or, or you know any kind of content and i'll just criticize it and i'll say why it t- you know we made a whole video and i cut like 90 percent of it out and i was like you weren't talking to a bride the whole video and that's the whole point of the video is you're talking to brides and he's like yes of course like he's a really clever guy but when you're a client when you're a client you've got so much going on in your world it's hard to like so that's our job is to know that you're speaking to this demographic. Maybe it's like making a mood board of who your audience is, um, your exact audience is, and then figuring out what their, la- their language is, how they receive messages, and then crafting something that will work exactly for them. And he, he hadn't even thought, I'm talking to brides here. Hmm. You know, he's, he's kind of like this nebulous idea of like a wedding client. It's like you're talking to... 15 brides essentially mm. that are going to book your venue yeah. with this video so he's like oh, yeah. but it's that's kind of and suddenly makes the job a lot easier well lot. you know yeah it sucks things. yeah exactly yeah, yeah. and it and then you've got the purpose then you can make every design choice off of that purpose and it makes mm. the whole pr- process easy yeah 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 hmm. i think yeah what um to bring you back in richard is <laughs> <Thank you>. um <laughs> Talking about simplicity of making things. Yeah, make me a drink. Fit for, uh, <laughs> yeah, that cinnamon, whatever, is incredible. Bengal tea. Bengal tea. We need to get the best. on board. We need to sponsor. get 
celestial teas to send us some. <laughs> I think it's a lot more challenging to do that with obviously when you rather than digital stuff, but physical stuff. Yeah. So keep that well, th- th- well, something I was wanting to mention is but that I think, a lot of the time when on... I'm constricted by what clients are telling me to do and things like that, I think you that's why. No, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, yeah. Um, but that's why I have to paint because I come back and then right. I've. I can paint and I can be creative and I can go on my journey and I don't know where I'm going. See, that's and normal. a lot of that's the time, more normal. But a lot what we of do the is time, weird. What, that, that's more a lot of the time, what comes at the end of my paintings or whatever, I've done it and it's more of a ooh, a happy accident. And it can be like, oh, this has worked or that's not worked. And if it's not worked, it gets painted over or yeah, yeah. But the yeah, my process of wanting to be creative. I can take it into my work, but I'm very restricted in what I can do a lot of the time with clients and the physicality of yeah, yeah. the actual room. But, um, and money. Yeah, way, the clients of, way more yeah. challenging. But I think in terms of, you, you mentioned it, I always made me think about that, was that um, restrictions are really good for trying to uh, get through, get something interesting out of it. Yeah. Um, trying to have this chat with students a lot where they just you can sit down at a computer and you could do anything you want on that computer. Right. Yeah. Even just open one piece of Adobe software, you can virtually do anything you want on it. Yeah. Well, unless it crashes. Color, yeah. Sorry. Unless it crashes. Unless it crashes. But actually, if you limit them to, right, you've got this paper and some uh, pencil and a photocopy right now, make, you know, make something. Um, I think there's limitations like you might, we might put them on ourselves, but sometimes I think you have to be more creative. So you've got that kind yeah. of less things to do stuff with. So you've got to be creative how you put those together, what that process is for those elements you've got. Um, it's more difficult, as you say, when you've got a client and this space and a budget. Yeah. I mean, we've got budgets to work with, but in terms of like playing about digitally, it's a completely different thing, isn't it? Yeah. But because um, a lot of the time it's just a time constraint as well, I guess, with what you're doing. As well, I guess it is with everybody, to be honest. But yeah, the the physicality of the materials and the the space and what you're doing and just yeah, the the budget's probably the main thing with a lot of clients though. You just don't want to. You could just go on forever. You could throw yeah. so much money at a building; it's untrue. You could like yeah, that wall needs to go. That needs good. This needs floor. Ceilings, lights, white, just like, hmm. but then it, you could make it almost like a gallery space where you'd put your work, hmm. which it has to be really simplistic to, to put other people's work in there. It's just, yeah, it's, it's a strange, I don't like the constraints a lot of the time. And sometimes I do need to still scratch that itch of the adventure as we were talking about. Yeah, earlier. yeah, yeah. So you come home and paint and then shove them up in your loft. Yeah. I never left the... I love uh, that. <laughs> I love that you make stuff to make stuff. That's why you make stuff, isn't it? No. I'm, I, we've make established stuff. this. I, I make stuff so that other people make like give me affirmation. Uh, certain people see it. Nick's seen quite a few of my paintings before. Haven't yeah, you? yeah, we've yeah, had yeah. little... He gives me little crits on them occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think they are for other people. We talked about this the other yeah, in the other one when we were talking about um, Michelangelo and the Medici family and stuff like that. Yeah. So I thought about that afterwards and I thought having a, an oil painting on your wall back then was probably like having a massive plasma screen or something. Yeah, you yeah, wouldn't absolutely. invite members of the public in to come and look at your plasma screen, yeah. would you? You might let them catch a glimpse of it through the window or talk about it, but... It's not even a plasma screen anymore, is it? That's a bit like... Well, they did those tours, actually, didn't they? You did fine art. They did tours of, like, work, but I think it it was, like, a while after it had been commissioned. Yeah. They would tour it around the country. Yeah, possibly, after yeah. people died we were talking about needed how the wall space. Is it more difficult to create now because you're putting it in an exhibition space which is infinitely bigger than it used to be? So in that in that regard would the Mona Lisa and stuff like that be even made because they might have been crushed by the criticism so are the creators around now are we tougher uh, uh, no I mean that that's uh, that's difficult to answer because obviously yeah what was Mona Lisa's what like 
15th century. The Mona Lisa wasn't actually that popular a painting until it got stolen. And more people went to see the empty shadow on the wall than had went to see the painting for ages. And then it became really popular again when they found it and put it back up. So like there's something about the, right there. the, the missing paintings like kind of more, got more allure than the actual painting being there. Hmm. Just, there's something in that, I'm sure. But yeah, weird. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's just a lot of uh, art history and development to compare like now. And then um, I think it's, 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 is it more challenging to make a living as an artist now? As, a, as a, is what we might think of an artist as a painter or whatever. But um, Is it become more diluted and integrated into other professions? Create like that creative talent? Uh, what do you mean? How do you mean like diluted and integrated into other professions? I mean like back then there was like a painter, a stone yeah. carver. And now you, you and me, we're like loads of millions of different things. We're like accountants and administrators, and we're lecturers and yeah, 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 marketers and yeah. I think, um, but everyone's got the ability to do that now because we've got different uh, tools. We've got computers, so any, anyone can just with an iPhone. You know, it's more powerful than those computers I was using. <laughs> yeah, uh, so anyone can be a graphic designer to put typography on an image and communicate a message essentially um but even so like do making that. stories on instagram yeah, yeah. and how people assemble some of those you're like wow that looks really good you yeah. know like but did you but they're constrained as well i guess with what they can use and how they're using it but it's, yeah but more people are exercising their creativity maybe yeah they so to. the creativity that comes out that needs to be admired needs to be really getting better right. and better and better right. I don't, I yeah, yeah but you, you, what is what is if you'd better sp- if you just spat a meme out in like 1995 off a phone and somebody saw that they'd have thought fucking hell that's really high quality really <laughs> that's like a, that's wow. a great meme <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well mate the memes that were around back then were higher quality than the memes that are being produced now maybe because they really popped and they'd pop for like a month and now they pop for like half a day. Yeah. But it's, it's just like more produced, so it just gets hidden. Have you ever made a meme? Uh, did I make one? With, no. I no. made one of Bourne once. So I can't remember. I, no. guess the, I guess the tote bag that you did is a bit of a meme in many ways. That was a print. You're talking about the don't be a print. Yeah. <laughs> I need commission off those books. <laughs> Of we talked yeah, about that yeah. because uh, yeah, yeah, he went he stole that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, he's, yeah. I'm he's sure next week. <laughs> no one ever has said that before that phrase. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that was originally a poster for a, a festival in Leeds. But yeah, I did put it on a tote bag once. But um, yeah, I suppose that was yeah. That's a meme. We've been throwing out a lot of ideas, and uh, the Sorry, podcast is like an hour in. <laughs> We, we were, we were, You've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> I'm not editing anything. I'm editing that one bit, but uh, yeah. Can you know when I'm rambling on about my story of how I came to be in this universe at the beginning? Oh, Can you no, edit I that? love that. Can you edit that down so it's exciting? I'm interested in that. <laughs> it is exciting. Did you just you edit have, the whole you thing to New so Zealand exciting. for three months. You went to I, New York. I, I didn't know you even know you'd been to New York. No, that's so cinematic. I'm not I know, I've got all oh, sorts that, of... That was incredible. But I've like, said that um, I've said that little like synopsis a lot, like introducing my work or right. whatever before. So I just get a bit like. So you know this is what I was true. It's not even true. But this is what He's, I was saying at the <laughs> when me and you <laughs> yeah. in yeah. episode one when we were introducing ourselves. You marketing. build your own little narrative that becomes your little marketing yeah, thing for yeah. how you've got to where you are. And you repeat are. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And he was, this what, is my story. He was What's walk, your story? He was walking around in the sludge in Scunthorpe. <laughs> in reality, it's just become. You just know. Dub that over the he top. Was like, <laughs> it was like chin high snow in Manhattan. We we go back. We go back through like the weather history of Manhattan. It's like that's never happened. <laughs> yeah, there's a period in like March where it can be snowing one week and then just bright sure. sunshine. The next. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I'm not editing. Don't they have the, didn't they have the hurricane where everything... That was a few years ago, wasn't it? The um, mm. the the full kind of... Yeah, where yeah, it was it's, shut down. Yeah, it's it like shut down. 10 feet deep snow yeah, and yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah. The it does apocalypse happen. is coming. Anyway, thanks so much for listening this far. It's great. If you, if, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to talk... Well, I'd look, I mean, we're doing 10 episodes. 
Maybe. Yeah, I'd love to have him back on because it's so interesting. Yeah, no, Thanks so much not. for listening and watching so far. Um, anything you want to say? Where can we find you on the internet? How do we hire you to do money? Totally okay. Uh, yeah, .co.uk is my website and totally dot okay on the Instagram, if you've mm. heard of that. Get on the gram. Rich. Yeah. Rich Gollan at everything. <laughs> <laughs> don't got one. don't no. try and find him on the internet. No. No. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, talk to you uh, next week. Yeah, uh, episode four. Yeah, I'm not God, sure. We're the really guests. plowing through yeah. these, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Oh. we need to get a, we need to get a broad on, don't we? <laughs> don't I don't know why I looked at you then. We need to, <laughs> <laughs> we need to get a, a gal. <laughs> we'll try and sort one. Sheffield's full of really talented females yeah. as well. It is my street. It's yeah. <laughs> I'm not going very far for these guests. I'm <laughs> saving money on the Ubers. Shout out a window. <laughs> Oi, what have you got a podcast? You do, you do stuff, don't you? <laughs> you you've got felt tips, aren't you? Get your son in here. All right, then. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Talk to you next week. Bye Thank bye. you. Bye.